Welcome back, everybody, here to episode number eight of Road to World Series with the Seattle Mariners. In the last episode, we made it all the way to the championship series, but lost to the Red Sox in seven games. In this episode, we're going to be heading into the 2026 season. Without further ado, let's head straight into it. The first guy that I want to sign here will be the first baseman, Jake Bowers. He's 30 years old. He's a lefty lefty. He's got pretty good fielding. And all around, he's all around just a really good player. I'd be signing him for $22 million a year for four years. And because we won 99 games last year, I'm able to spend $40 million. So the first guy that I want to add is Jake Bowers. And let's head and see the second guy that I want to sign. The second guy here that I want to sign is the left-handed relief pitcher, Jesse Biddle. He's 34 years old. In the last season, he pitched to a 1.46 ERA. He's going to be a pretty decent piece in my bullpen considering I have, I think, four rookies or four people who have only had like two years of experience. So to get a guy who's a little older and a little more experienced in there is, I think, an asset. So, And he's a lefty. I don't have many lefties in my bullpen. So yeah, that's the second guy that I'm going to sign and honestly the last guy that I'm going to sign. So from here on out, I'll see if everyone signs and then we'll head probably to the season unless there's a trade that I want to make. Alright, so the first trade I'm going to be making here is the starting pitcher Jorge Lopez, who hasn't pitched well for us like at all, and a catching prospect in Joe Hill, 25, 68 overall with a B potential, over to the Orioles for a B potential 21-year-old Buddy Thurgeon, center fielder, and the shortstop 22-year-old B potential Eric Burns. Now, these two guys are young, could be decent pieces in the future or even trade bait if I need to. So yeah, that's the first trade I'm making here. And the second trade that I'm going to be making here is the 32 year old B potential and 74 overall pitcher Rob Whalen, who is never going to make my team and the left fielder 22 year old A potential but only 60 overall Kyle Simmons, who probably needs a good three or four years before he can even make it to the Royals for their 24-year-old A potential 83 overall closer, Darren Stockton. Now he has pretty good stats all around, and he has like two, one good year, one really good year, and one shaky year, so I'm going to take a chance. He's a lefty, he throws a lot of gas, and this is just the guy that I decided to go with because I need another reliever, and he looked like the best option that I could find out there for a decent enough price. Batting first will be our center fielder Malik Smith. In the two hole will be Willie Adames. Batting third will be Aaron Judge. In the cleanup spot I will have Miguel Sano. Hitting fifth will be Brandon Nimmo. Batting sixth will be Yoan Mankata. Hitting seventh will be Jake Bowers. Hitting eighth will be Matt Frederick. And batting ninth will be AJ Wyatt. Batting first will be the center fielder Malik Smith. Hitting second will be Willie Adames. In the three spot will be Aaron Judge. Cleaning up will be Miguel Sano. In the five hole will be Brandon Nimmo. Batting six will be Yoan Mancata. Hitting seventh will be Jake Bowers. Hitting eighth will be Matt Frederick. And batting ninth, I will have AJ Wyatt. On the bench, it will be Omar Narvaez, Jared Kalenic, Cesar Isturis Jr., and Joe Rizzo. Our rotation will look like this with Luis Severino in the one spot. David Calzado will be pitching second, Jordan Montgomery will be third, Yadier Alvarez will be fourth, and, and fifth will be the newly called up rookie in Logan Gilbert. In the bullpen, Ryan Stanek will be the long reliever now as Mason Bridges, Darren Stockton, Keone Kella, and the newly called up Michael Yu will be our middle relievers. Jesse Beto will be our setup man for Mackenzie Dickerson, who has been absolutely amazing the two years that we have had him. Now with that being said, let's head straight into the season and I will see you guys at draft day. Alright, we have made it to the draft. We are the number 28 pick. Let's see how we do. The first guy that we're going to be going for here in the draft is the starting pitcher Oscar Manzanillo. The second guy that we're going to go for here who could either be a star or will just be a bust is the left fielder Santiago Zapata. The third guy we're going to be drafting here is the left-handed closer Will Schroeder. 
In the fifth round, we're going to take a chance on the reliever, Tom Settingquist. And in the final round, since we have basically no choices left, I might as well go with one of the guys with the highest potentials in the catcher, Will Madrano. Now that we've gone through the draft, we're going to take a look at our draft picks. I think the first guy will probably be a good B potential, hopefully an A potential. The rest of them are just up in the air. So after the first guy, I just hope that we got some good players. Although it wouldn't shock me if the first guy was a D potential. Nah, he's a C potential. I had a feeling that it was too good to be true. But let's see, we got two C potentials, one B potential, and two D potentials. Yeah, later later year drafts are usually the ones that give you like pretty bad overall picks, at least in my experience. So let's sign these guys up and take a look at some stats. Malik Smith is hitting 307 with 12 home runs as our leadoff guy. Willie Adamas is hitting 313 with 12 home runs and 45 RBIs. Aaron Judge is struggling so far in the average department, only hitting 248, but is of course keeping on track with 14 home runs and 39 RBIs. Miguel Sano is hitting 291 with 14 home runs. Brandon Nimmo is hitting really, really good with a 369 average, 13 home runs, and 47 RBIs. Yohan Moncada is hitting 307 with 15 home runs and 43 RBIs. Jake Bowers is hitting okay, 266, 8 home runs, and 26 RBIs. Matt Frederick isn't having his power numbers so far here two months into the season, but he does have 41 RBIs. And AJ Wyatt is hitting 260 with five home runs here two months in. On the bench, Omar Narvaez is hitting 292. Jared Kalenic, it says he's hot, but he's only batting 186. Cesar Hernandez hasn't gotten much playing time, so he's only hitting 222 in nine at bats. And Joe Rizzo is hitting 278 here with 54 at bats. In the rotation, Severino is having another Cy Young caliber season, pitching to a 2.2 ERA in 94 innings pitched. David Calzado is struggling just a bit, just a bit, with a 7.04 ERA here so far. Jonah Montgomery is pitching to a 3.53 ERA. Yadier Alvarez is also struggling a little bit here, pitching to a 4.77 ERA. And Logan Gilbert... The rookie, who has not had any MLB experience, is pitching to a pretty good 2.34 ERA. In the bullpen, Ryan Stanek is pitching to a 4.44 ERA as our long reliever. Mason Bridges has a 3.4 ERA. Darren Stockton is having a little bit of trouble here in the majors, pitching to a 4.88 ERA. Keone Kella is pitching to a 5.16 ERA so far, also struggling. Michael Yu also struggling. I feel like this is a reoccurring theme here with a 4.96 ERA. Jesse Biddle, however, is pitching pretty good so far with a 1.5 ERA. And McKenzie is really, really struggling as our closer, 5.26. In the standings, the Yankees are leading the East with seven games over the Rays. The Royals, who haven't been a contender at all so far, is leading the Central 5.5. We are, however, leading the West by five and a half as well, even though our pitching has been pretty poor, if I must say. And in the wild card, it is the Rays and Rangers with the Angels and Red Sox five and a half back. In the National League East, it is the Mets and Marlins tied up there with the Phillies one game back. In the Central, it's the Reds on top with the Brewers one game back. And in the West, it is the Padres with the Rockies only half a game back. And in the wild card, it is the Brewers and Marlins with the Phillies, Rockies, Nationals, Braves, and Giants, and Cardinals all within five back. So, so far, even with our pitching struggles, we have a pretty good record. So let's head straight into the trade deadline and at that point, see if we need to make any moves or not. All right, we have made it to the trade deadline. We're gonna take a quick look at the standings so far, and then we're gonna look at some stats. So in the East, it is the Yankees leading by a long shot 16 games over the Red Sox. The Indians have taken over the Central by one game. 
And in the West, we are running away with it by 14 and a half games over the Rangers. Now in the wild card, it is the Red Sox, Rangers, and Rays all tied with the Astros two games back. In the National League East, it is the Marlins who are on top with the Phillies two and a half games back. In the Central, it is the Brewers five and a half games over the Reds. And in the West, it is the Rockies half a game above the Dodgers. In the wild card, it is the Reds and Phillies with the Dodgers, Mets, Nationals, Braves, and Cardinals all five, all within five games back. Malik Smith is hitting 324 with 20 home runs already by the trade deadline, doing probably the best of his career here as our leadoff guy. Willie Adamas is batting 289 with 19 home runs. Aaron Judge has started to raise his average again now to 276 with 27 home runs and 83 RBIs. Miguel Sano has a 283 average with 23 home runs and 69 RBIs. Brandon Nimmo is hitting really, really well with a 355 average and 23 home runs. Yoan Moncada has a 299 average, 28 home runs, and 69 RBIs. Jake Bowers has a 269 average, 13 home runs, and 48 RBIs. Matt Frederick has really started to hit for average now with a 305 average, 12 home runs, and 70 RBIs. And AJ White is probably having his worst season so far with 11 home runs and only a 259 average. On the bench, Omar Narvaez is batting 284 with 6 home runs. Jared Kalenic is not doing so well as our backup outfielder, only hitting 181. Cesar Hernandez, okay. Cesar Isturis isn't getting many at bats, since I'm pretty sure that my lineup is already doing as well as it can with our infielders. And Joe Rizzo is batting 281, 3 home runs, and 13 RBIs. In the rotation, Luis Severino is still doing very, very well, pitching to a 2.83 ERA. David Calzado has dropped the ERA a bit, now to a 5.45. He's getting better. Hopefully, he can finish the season out pretty good. Jordan Montgomery has also lowered his ERA, now down to a 3.17 ERA. Yadier Alvarez has not been the best, pitching to a 4.83. And Logan Gilbert has struggled just a little bit, now pitching to a 3.69 ERA. Ryan Stanek has lowered his ERA down to a 3.91 ERA as our long reliever. Mason Bridges has a 3.84 ERA. Darren Stockton has a 4.32 ERA over 50 innings. Keone Kella has a 4.7 ERA. Michael Yu has started to improve his ERA now with a 3. Jesse Biddle has gotten a little worse, but not bad, to a 2.94 ERA now. And Mackenzie Dickerson has a 4.25 ERA as our closer. Alright, so the only trade that I'm going to be making here, and it's not one that I wanted to make, but it's just one that I felt like I had to make. I'm going to be trading away Jared Kalenic to the Brewers, along with Joey Gerber, who just hasn't worked for me in the bullpen the one or two years that I had him in there, and a seat potential starter in Nathaniel Early, over to the Brewers for a beat potential 22-year-old in Jose Espinoza, a 27-year-old guy who will probably take over the spot of Kalenic for now in Jacob Pearson, and an A potential starting pitcher in Alex Fontaine. Now I'm going to sim up to the postseason. We're going to take a look at everyone's end of the year stats and then see if this is the year that we finally win the World Series. All right, we've made it to the end of the season. I accidentally skipped over the thing that said how many wins we got. So we won 100 games. Just wanted to get that out there. Now we're going to take a look at our lineup and rotation. Starting off here with Malik Smith hitting 328, 24 home runs as our leadoff guy. You can't ask for anything else. The guy just had a monster season. I'm pretty sure it is tied for the most home runs. And I'm almost certain, yeah, it is the highest average he's had so far ever. So, yeah, a very, very good season here for Malik Smith. Willie Adamas hit 288 with 33 home runs. Aaron Judge, definitely not his best season, but 281, 38 home runs, and 109 RBIs. Pretty, pretty good. 
Miguel Sano hit 282 with 31 home runs. Brandon Nimmo had a very, very good season hitting 339 with 31 home runs and 104 RBIs. Yohan Mankata hit 298 with 38 home runs and just under 100 RBIs. Jake Bowers had a pretty good season, all things considered, hitting 272, 24 home runs, and 85 RBIs. Matt Frederick had a Matt Frederick didn't have the biggest power season, but he definitely made up with it, hitting 294 and getting 112 RBIs in the eight spot. And AJ Wyatt had his worst season so far, hitting 253 with 16 home runs and 51 RBIs. Hopefully next season, if there is a next season, he can get everything back to how it should be. On the bench, Omar Narvaez definitely struggled towards the end, now only having a 247 average. Jacob Pearson took over, hit 283. Cesar Hernet Cesar Isters Jr. did not get many at best throughout the season, now only hit it. Cesar Isters Jr. did not have many, many at bats throughout the season and only hit 250 through with what he had. And Joe Rizzo hit 280 with 5 home runs and 17 RBIs over 132 at bats. Here in the pitching, the rotation. Here in the rotation, Luis Severino pitched very great with a 2.8 ERA in 218 innings. David Calzado definitely struggled this year, pitching to a 5.2 ERA. I think jumping him to the number two starter definitely messed with him. Jordan Montgomery had a 3.73 ERA, a pretty good season, all things considered. Yadier Alvarez also struggled quite majorly, 5.38 ERA. But Logan Gilbert in his first season, 4.31. He is a rookie. I wasn't expecting him to have that two point whatever. ERA he had at the first two months, so it's it's progress. In the bullpen, Ryan Stanek had his ERA go up again to a 4.37. Mason Bridges has a 3.65 ERA. Darren Stockton has a 4.44. Keone Kella has a 4.18 ERA. Michael Yu struggled at the end of the year pitching to a 4.85 ERA. Jesse Biddle had a good season pitching to a 3.21 ERA, and Mackenzie Dickerson started to get better at the end of the year pitching to a 3.97 ERA and having 45 saves. Now let's head right into the playoffs. It's going to be us against Kansas City. In the wild card, it'll be the Red Sox and Rays, and then whoever wins will go on to face the Yankees. In the National League, it'll be the Marlins versus the Dodgers. And in their wild card, it'll be the Phillies and Rockies, and whoever wins will face off against the Brewers. All right, game one, we win it four nothing. Game two, we lose it three to four. Game three, we lose it seven to ten, and we're already in a deficit here in the division series. Let's go into game four. It's going to be Logan Gilbert against Brady Singer. Aaron Judge gets a single here in the first inning, and Miguel Sano hits a two-run home run. We take an early two nothing lead. Taylor Trammell gets a double and Carter Keboom gets a single to get him in. It is 2-1 here. Julio Rodriguez gets on here with a walk. Montero drives him in with a double. It is now 2-2 here in the second. Aaron Judge strikes out. Miguel Sano gets on here in the fourth with a walk. Nimmo pops up and Mancada triples him in. It is now 3-2 here in the fourth. Bowers gets a single. It's 4-2 now. Frederick gets on with a walk. We got first and second here with two outs. And Wyatt also gets on with a walk. It's now bases loaded. Malik Smith. And he singles in two runs. Six to two. We've scored four runs here in the fourth. Willie Adamas leads off the seventh inning with a walk. And Judge triples him in. It is now 7-2. Miguel Sano strikes out. Brandon Nimmo. Two run home run. We are just piling it on here. 9-2 here in the seventh inning. The Mariners have won the game 9-2. Now let's head right into Game 5. Julio Rodriguez gets them on the board with a solo home run. Willie Adamas leads off the bottom of the fourth here with a walk. Aaron Judge strikes out. Miguel Sano triples him in. It is now tied 1-1. One one. 
Miguel Sano reaches in the bottom of the sixth here with two outs with a double. And Brandon Nimmo singles him in. It's now 2-1 to one here in the bottom of the sixth. We're going to bring in the man, Mackenzie Dickerson, to pitch the top of the ninth inning. Contreras reaches on a walk. McCarthy doubles him in and is tied 2-2. Rodriguez gets on with a single. I have to take him out. Darren Stockton will take over. They're going to bring in a pinch runner. Montero grounds out. It is second and third. One out. Davis reaches on a walk. I need a double play. He strikes out. That works too. Trammell flies out. We're bringing in Ryan Stanek here in the top of the 12th inning. Davis gets on with a walk. Rivera gets on with a walk. Trammell hits into a double play. Keyboom singles in the go-ahead run. And we get the fly out to end the inning. Bottom of the 12th. We're down a run. We have the two, three, and four hitters up. And on the wings is Brandon Nimmo, if anyone were to get on. Nimmo is our hottest hitter right now. Let's do something. They're bringing in Rob Hayek. Adamus flies out. Judge flies out. And we have been eliminated from the playoffs yet again. When it comes to the big spots, our hitters just don't hit. The Dodgers have won the World Series here in 2026. It's honestly starting to look like the Mariners will never win the World Series. But you know what? I'm going to do my damnedest to make sure they do. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so you always know when I post the videos. Also, if you liked the video, please consider leaving a like and leaving a comment down below telling me which teams you want me to do next. Or if there's anything that you maybe don't understand about how I'm doing this, if you want me to explain it further, I would absolutely love to. And if there's any changes to the rules that I do have that you think would benefit me or just the series in general, also leave that down in the comments. But with that said, we're going to head into episode 9 of now the 2027 season, and I will see you guys there.